together and begin. Be sober, be vigilant, be out of your eyes, and never forget the Lord your God. For it is He who makes the fire. For it is better, don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah. Right. 
things that are just and leave all that stinking thinking alone. Yeah. This is being sober yeah. in your right mind. Yeah. That's why we love to say that soul about the man that was clothed mm -hmm. and in his right mind after he had come through it uh -huh. of the vexation of the spirit. It says to be vigilant, yeah. to be vigilant, to be diligent, to be determined, uh, to to not be lazy, but but to do your due diligence in everything you do. Put some work in before you go to work. Oh. Amen. Did you hear that? Yeah. Because there's always something to do before you do what you got to do. Preparation prevents poor performance in anything. So it says, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, we know who the adversary is. He's a, our enemy. Yes, he He's on the other side of the fence, beckoning you to come on the cross. Yes. He's the one that you find in dark alleys, in dark corners. He's the one that is trying to lead you astray. Uh -huh. But the word today is to don't stray. Don't stop. Don't, stop. don't stray. Don't stray. Don't stop. Don't stop. We get to the don't stop. I, 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 want, I want us to don't stray. Yeah. yeah I, I want us to don't strut. Yeah. Because some folks strut. And you know it's a mindset in that strut. And then I don't want us to stoop. I don't want us to stoop because that's below you. The stoop. Only time we stoop down is to help someone. Yeah, don't stoop. Don't stoop. But this don't stray. Don't stray. I found a scripture that fits it. And one nineteen Psalms one nineteen sixty seven. So it says, "Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word." Uh -huh. Affliction will straighten you up. Yes. Affliction <laughs> will give you some act right here. Yeah. That's why the Bible says spare not the right. Yeah. That's why the Bible tells us that the Lord chastised those whom he loved. Yeah. Yeah. And if he don't chastise us, that means that we don't belong to him. We are a bastard child. The Bible uh, says uh, that uh, he was afflicted and he had went astray any time that we stray from the truth, any time that we stray from the nest, then uh, we will be afflicted. Mm -hmm. And most afflictions come from the world mm -hmm. because we know the Lord's affliction. The Bible says his chastisement is not grievous. Right. And, and it don't last long. Yeah. But he'll smack us on the head to let us know that we're wrong. And then he instructs us to go and sin no more. Yeah. He instructs us to not return to your body like the dogs do. Because if you do, then the next time you fall, it's going to be seven times worse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't stray. Don't stray. Christians sometimes neglect their prayer life. You start straying from your prayer life. Yes. It does not it just mean don't stray physically. Don't leave the fold. It does not mean don't, don't stray away from home too far. No, it means stray away from those things that we have uh, come to love and we know that it's good for us yes. and give life and it doesn't take life. And prayer is definitely one of them. Amen. Right? Yes. So the Bible tells us yes. to don't stray always pray without ceasing. Uh -huh. uh, and don't stop studying the Word of God. Amen. Don't stop hearing the Word of God. Oh. If you don't read that good, you can hear that good. God yeah. gives you a gift. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yeah. How do you think? Yeah. How do you think that the deaf man gets the Word? Mm. If he can't hear it, God makes sure that he can read it. Amen. God make sure that He's going to get the word to you. So, yeah. so, so here is uh, don't stray yeah. from reading the word of God. Don't stray from your prayer life because when you do, you that's the drifting. Yeah. You begin to drift further and further. I don't know if you've been out in the sea, but I can remember love the beach. We go out to the beach. I remember uh, being on the junior frog team. That is the neighborhood park that teaches you how to swim and, and how to stay up under the water and put on your fins and your goggles and all of that. And I enjoy learning how to swim and 
until they took us to the ocean. <laughs> they took us out into that ocean, and we got in that water, and we had to put on all your equipment underwater, and, and, and come up and, and, and you then, you know, pass the grave. And, and we got out there, and while I was underwater, I didn't know where I was at, but underwater, I didn't know my direction. And I'm turning around, and I'm trying to put this stuff on, and by the time I came and got it together and come up out of the water, I was about a mile away from shore. I looked up and said, oh, Lord, let me, let me get my way back. And, 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 and God would have it that I barely made it back. When the, when, when the wind started getting short, I'm getting closer, but I'm also running out of gas. Yeah, yeah. When your money started getting low, yeah. bills is on their way, what I'm going to do. Yeah. I felt that stress, but I made it. Yeah. I made it because I was a praying young man. I was raised in the church. I knew that if you didn't have nobody but Jesus, yeah. that's enough. Yeah. 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 So he, he don't want us to he don't want us to stray. He, he, he don't especially those that lack courage to keep going. Those that that, that have a emotional life. You wake up with prayer. You don't just pray when it's time to eat, but you pray when it's time to sleep. You pray when it's time to leave your house. Bless your bless your steps as you leave your house every day. Then then. I, I want you to hear a little bit on don't strut. Yeah. Don't strut. Mm -hmm. You know what the strut is. Mm -hmm. It's one of those cool walks that we all learned yeah. and we was growing up. Yeah. When I was a teenager, I don't know about the rest of you brothers, mm -hmm. but I, I, was, I was trying to be cool right. because everybody in the neighborhood wanted to be cool. We had, yeah. we had to look a certain way. We couldn't come out the house. And then, I know y'all don't iron Levi's no more, but we had, we had to have a This is before her passing. 
I said, yes, yeah, I'm going to be with every one of them. I know I'm well. And, and I've always got my pride and stuff with my arrogance or my confidence. And, and I don't think I'm that pride with mama. But when mama got through with me, <laughs> she felt like she had took a bill to me. <laughs> she felt like she had took a bill to me. And, and she helped me, though. Yes, she helped me. She helped me let go of that never, never asking for help, never wanting someone to to, to help lift me up. Uh, she helped me. She helped me with being so prideful uh, that it wasn't no good for me to let some people in sometimes to humble myself so that the Lord can can make a way. Too many times we talk about the Lord will make a way out of no way, if not until you. Jesus is our example. Oh, yes. He was the most humble. Yes. Mm -hmm. He declared that he could do nothing by himself. Uh -huh. He accredited the Lord, the Father, you know, yes, in did. all things. Yes. He said if it wasn't for him, I, I couldn't do nothing. Yeah. And he yeah. pleased his Father. According to the Gospel of John in that 8th chapter, toward the end of that chapter, he pleased him. And we must humble too. Yeah. We avoid uh, a Satan traps and his snares yeah. by, by not straining and, and not getting too haughty to where, where, where we'll be strutting and, and looking like we're something that we ought not be. Yeah. And then, then we, we find that Peter, out of this one verse, yeah. to be sober and to be vigilant, I have two more points that help bring this verse out. And the next one is don't stoop. Don't stoop. I see it. You see it. You know when you take a back seat. And you should be in the front seat. You know when you succumb to somebody who's trying to run everything, but they're not qualified. And you should be in the driver's seat. You know. And when yet you take a back seat. See? Yeah. That's not humility. Mm -hmm. That is ignorance. That, yeah. that is blinding. The blind is following the blind. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that, that, that we shouldn't we should stoop in Romans 12 and 21. Be not overcome of evil, mm -hmm. but overcome evil with good. Oh, yes. yeah. So if you have this weapon of righteousness, if you have this weapon of holiness, if you have this weapon because you are a child of the king, and you know by just being born again, being saved, and being in the kingdom, a baptized believer, you know what comes with that. You have the spirit of God. You know the spirit of Don't condone 
the evil that's going around. Just because a he or she is your friend, don't tell them that it's okay to, to commit a sin or to do what they're doing. Tell them the truth.
the spirit. The spirit just ran me right on the path and struck. Yes. Because you know what it struck to do. Whether it's on a man or a woman. But don't do it. Don't do it. Don't stop. Remember the prayer. So get ready. Alright, get ready. But guess what?